Hi and welcome to the last chapter of our 5G radio planning course. In this chapter, we are going to discuss about the initial parameter planning for performing a PRAG planning. So in this, we will give you an introduction of a random access procedure in 5G. And then we will describe some important PRAG parameters and with the help of an example, we will explain how a root sequence index planning is done using any planning tool. So let's get started. So to understand PRAG, we need to first understand the process of random access. And in order to understand random access, we need to first understand what happens when the UE switch on for the first time. As soon as a UE is switched on, it's, it is started looking for the global synchronization channel number or GSCN. With the help of GSCN, GSCN search is something similar to your previous frequency scan in LTE network. And once the GSCN search started with the help of the GSCN search, the UE identified the primary synchronization signals, the secondary synchronization signals, and then the PBCH, physical broadcast channel, where the MIB or the master information block is transmitted. These three are always together and they are called as the SSBs, synchronization signal block, which the UE uses in order to perform cell sync in order to perform cell synchronization in order to get in sync with the cell UE searches for the synchronization signal blocks. And after reading the MIB UE get and reach to the system information block number one where it identifies the cell selection related parameters. And with the help of the cell selection related parameters, UE performs the functionality of cell selection. If you look closely, all these things, all these steps which are happening, they all are happening in the downlink direction. And right now the network is not even aware whether the UE has selected him or not. So UE using the information given in SIB1, uses a first uplink channel called PRATCH in order to initiate a process called random access to get access on the cell. So that means random access is the procedure with the help of which UE will let the network know that I have selected you and I am having an intent to be connected with you. So this is the main purpose of performing random access. The process of random access, I hope you are clear from your previous LT experience. There are two types of random access which are available. One of them is called as contention based random access. Another one is called as contention free random access. And to perform random access, we have a term called preambles. So every cell in a 5G network has 64 preambles which the network can choose randomly and send this as a request mechanism or it is using the preamble as one of these token in order to get access on the cell. So there are total 64 preambles which are available. Remember this, 64 preambles, unique preambles are available for a cell which UE can make use and give the network in the PRAT channel. So therefore it becomes very important to perform the planning in such a way that a preamble from one of the cell 
may not collide with the preamble of its neighboring cells and performing the pirage planning is nothing but to make sure that the preambles from one cell may not collide with the preamble of its neighbors so this is the basic idea of why we are performing the pirage planning okay now in the next step let us try and understand some basic pirage parameters which are required so first important parameter or pirage parameter is called as preamble format then next one is pirage configuration index then next important parameter is cyclic shift or ncs and finally the most important of them all is the root sequence index all these parameters are defined and explained in a 3gpp specification called 38.211 let me show you these parameters from this specification itself so this is the specification 38.211 and in its chapter 6.3 v3 6.3.3 we get the information about the physical random access channel so what is the first parameter it is called as preamble format so let's have a look at preamble formats so these two table represents the preamble format so we have two types of preamble formats table 6.3.3.1.1 represents long preambles and table 6.3.1.2 represents short preambles so these are short preambles these are long preambles long preamble formats are similar to what we used to have in lte let me first tell you what is the meaning of preamble what is the meaning of token so every preamble format represents two things one is the useful duration and the other one is cyclic prefix so depending upon what preamble format you are looking format 0 format 1 format 2 format 3 you can look at the size of the useful ratch duration so if in case you see here the ratch duration is only one times of this value in this ratch duration is two times in this ratch duration is four times in this ratch duration is also four times so you can clearly see if i am moving from format 0 to format 1 and format 1 to format 2 or 3 the reliability of the random access is increasing understand on the contrary if you look at the size of the token size of the cyclic prefix so cyclic prefix represents basically how far the cell can travel if you look at it here the cyclic prefix is smaller than this range so it means this is going to be used for a little smaller cell compared to format 0 and then format 3 format 2 could be of little larger distance comparing it with format 3 and then you have the size or the sub carrier spacing of the random access channel pira channel right then format a2 a3 b1 b2 b3 b4 c0 c2 
they are usually used for fr2 frequencies in these cases their frequencies are not limited to 1.25 or just 5 kilohertz they can go up to 15 20 15 30 60 and 120 kilohertz also here useful duration and the cyclic prefix also are different okay in our study we will focus only on the long preamble formats as of now